Information you will hear in this video will change your performance through this cycle. It's easily one of the most important videos on this channel. Yes, it's a long one. Yes, you would need some time to watch it at 2x speed. But everything is presented to you for free right here. Everything you need to know and understand for this cycle. It's up to you. Sometimes we're just 10, 20, 30, one hour, two hours away from making the right decision, from acting. We're just a small piece of information away from actually understanding narrative, from actually getting a conviction into something. This is why only 10% are actually making money on this market. Today, we will go through blue chip meme coins and why holding them is the highest ROI for this cycle. Why it's so hard to actually find blue chip meme coins. How to actually find blue chip meme coins. Easiest play of blue chip meme coins virtual bacon is exploiting right now as we speak. And Andy drama. Have I swapped all my Andy on blast to Andy on Ethereum already? The tale of thesis and conviction. And some bad behavior. But we will talk about this closer to the end of this video, right? You can't even fathom how important this information is for your performance during this cycle. You can't even fathom. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and let's actually start. So, let's start with blue chip meme coins and why holding them is the highest ROI for this cycle. Why holding blue chip meme coins is the hardest ROI? We all heard the tale of the guy who invested $8,000 in Shiba Inu in the last cycle and got several billions out of it. Money he cannot liquidate, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes, you are not often able to actually take profits on these crazy, crazy numbers that you are making with the meme coins because liquidity is just not there and the market caps, they might be inflated so, so much. A lot of these things are actually being used on Soylana to rob retail, rob the followers of influencers out of their money because it's just easier to use in marketing, right? Main reasons why. Lower market cap plus house money effect. Redo case. Blue chip meme coins on chains, usually they're quite often largest meme coins on chains, right? They are outperforming the main chain because once liquidity is actually coming into the chain, we have this house money effect which just simply means that holders of the main tokens or maybe of some tokens in the ecosystems of the chain, they start to make profit because more and more people are actually buying into the chain and into its ecosystem. And a lot of people, they're not comfortable with new money. They want to gamble with new money. They want to multiply the new money. Therefore, they start to execute very degen gambling behaviors from this point from their point of view, right? They start to actually throw their money into meme coins. Psychologically, it's not very, very comfortable when you actually find yourself with a new large sum of money. Because humans, we just have to get comfortable with something new. I wanted to share this on Rido example. We saw Rido started to pump somewhere around 22nd of February, right? We can check out from 22nd of February till the current levels it has done like 10x and at the tops it was as high as 23 x from the 22nd of February, right? Situation that we might actually see for the Ton coin, which is the main token of the ecosystem. We just see Ton doing 140%. And what's very, very interesting is that meme coin will continue to outperform the main token of the chain. That's why I don't hold any Ton. I'm not even longing any Ton. I just have my Rido back and I'm actually thinking on repositioning some of my tokens that I have currently that are not performing at this stage into Rido. And in general, it's actually happening on each and every chain. Pepe on Ethereum, Weef on Solana, we have a bunch of other memes on Solana, but Weef is definitely blue chip at this stage as essentially a larger meme. We have FUD, the bug on Sui, and we have a very, very interesting strategy that some of the influencers, smart guys, are exploiting currently. Maybe after my end video, maybe not. I will share some thoughts on this as well. This is, is easy to understand. If you're buying a meme coin on the chain, it's very simple. You don't need to understand what is happening on chain, why it's great, what type of parallelization it, it has, what type of interoperability. I can't even pronounce this word properly. Is it a layer 2, a layer 3, a layer 4, a layer 1? No one knows and no one wants to know as well. Just want to buy the picture of something and hold the picture of something. 
Thesis is very, very simple to understand. Thesis is simple to understand, therefore it's friendly for normies. Normies don't want to actually figure out your complex stuff. And that's, I think, one of the issues because a lot of people in the market, they actually, when they're buying into something, they don't think about who are they going to actually sell to. And if they're buying into something too, too complex, too, too technical, they only would be able to sell to similar tech people like them that will be coming later in the cycle. People like this, mid-curve, mid-guys, right? Analyze the fundamentalinos, these things. You have to understand what you, you actually have to know. Who are these people? How many of these people will actually go into the market? Will they buy your crap from you? Will it be so interesting enough for technical guys? That's why I think that most of the stuff that is happening is happening in meme coins currently because... People are looking to solve the exit liquidity problem and they're looking to buy into something that would be the most appealing for the exit liquidity at this stage. Cult-like communities. It's also very, very easy for normies and in general for people to understand that the community is cult-like. Everyone is screaming to billions, to millions, to hundreds of millions, to tens of billions. When you're buying into the meme coin on the chain, you're also solving your exit liquidity issue, which is essentially the most important issue that you can only have with any crypto investment, because if you're buying into something, you need to understand who you would be actually selling to, who's your exit liquidity eventually. That's the most important thing. If you're buying into the token if you, and you don't understand who is your exit liquidity, it means that the exit liquidity is you, especially if the token was suggested to you by someone, by someone you can trust and follow, right? Market capitulation, jealousy plus desperation due to the cycle missed. Very, very interesting thought that I was sharing previously in some videos as well, but I will go deeper. And that's why I'm essentially saying that this video is going to be one of the most important ones that you would actually check. Here is something from Dream Crypto that I was sharing. Take meme series. Once people who are holding old stuff like QNT and DOT, whatever, realize that they've almost wasted a whole cycle, they will capitulate and end up taking max risk to make up for it. Retail with a thousand bucks does not care about your Ethereum layer one. They want the quick come up. Meme coin millionaire stories will make them think that they're the ones who can achieve it too. And we don't have a lot of normies in the market yet. And still there are a bunch of people who is scammed and roped out of the money on Solana. And these are people who know something about crypto, who actually tend to think, they understand stuff, and they still were pushed into this whole narrative. They still got attracted by the whole thing happening, which is very, very interesting. If this has this type of effect on these people, on people who think that they know, that they understand things, right? What type of effect it would actually have on normies? Inflation, dollar is scamming, wars, and here are meme coins. Just, just put a hundred bucks in. Your friend just put a thousand bucks in and right now he has six hundred dollars. And they will persuade him to diamond hand. And he will just write this six hundred thousand dollars to zero. You cannot fathom how attractive this is. We are playing a best type of lottery here. We are playing a best type of casino here. Only if you are watching this video right now, you actually would be the casino. You would have an option to be the casino. But it's definitely going to be hard because you would have to form a conviction. You would have to hold things like that. But right now, you still have time to understand the thesis. And it's fine if you want. It's fine if you would want to close this video, not watch, not agree, time will force you to do it. Market will force you to do it anyway. Jealousy, capitulation, just because of the fact there are a bunch of people who are not making money at this stage and they are watching all the guys making money in meme coins. Dunning-Kruger effect, something that if you're actually seeing that you are somehow good, you start to think that you are a professional, an expert, right? This will, this what will happen with normies. This is why this casino is structured so, so well. They will come in, they will make some money. Because some guys on Twitter, even right now, they're saying what might be a better on-chain onboarding process than you just buy something and it goes up. 
something that we see on Solana, they will allow for them to make money. Unfortunately, eventually, they will take all this money away. Wells effect, markets will be going up. We are very, very bullish on macro this year and at least first half of the next one as well. Desperate retail. People don't have money at this stage. People are in debt. More and more, they would be seeing stories, not having enough funds to buy something that they want that is necessary for living. They will be hearing stories of their friends throwing hard bucks into a meme coin and making 10k and he's buying this new car or something or this Louis V bag, right? And they will do the same. You cannot fathom what type of world stage, market stage we're actually entering, how well this casino is actually structured and how rich will become richer. And how money will be taken from the poor? How much money? It's just so crazy. So, so crazy. The combination of events that are happening and will be happening. Large cap holders wanting to take risk, rising optimism. Part of them, they will make money. Part of them, they will make a bit of money. And they will be jealous. They will capitulate to meme coins. Moving forward, why it's hard to find blue chip meme coins? A lot of this space is just degenerate gambling with people not holding to their tokens. Most of the market is just trading, constantly dumping on each other and shilling crap to each other. Blue chip meme coins have several trades, each of them are usually following. I believe finding the blue chip meme coins and getting positions into them is the highest ROI for an average market participant this cycle. Something you want to understand is that most of the market is just trading, constantly dumping on each other. It's so, so easy to actually trade your Solana meme coins if you are an influencer, if you have following on Twitter. It's so, so easy. You just gather a bunch of your friends, you create a Telegram group, you say, guys, let's buy this dead meme coin and let's start to shield the meme coin. Let's not actually explain to our followers, to our audience, who's their exit liquidity? Where is the exit liquidity? Because... The thesis is weak because there is no exit liquidity because our followers are actually exit liquidity. And then we would be able to advertise like, oh, if you actually bought this token two days ago, you would made 50x, 100x. In reality, you could not because it was a cable agreement in the first place. They just agreed to buy the token in the first place and then pump. And the reason the token is that is because it does not have any narrative. It does not solve the issue of exit liquidity. And they don't want to buy something pumped because if something is up already, that just means that thesis there is good. That just means that there is a reason to hold the token. There is a reason why it's not dead in the first place. There might be something that actually answers to the question of exit liquidity for the token that's not dead, right? You cannot buy it at the bottoms and just pump it and dump on your followers, right? Because there is no future, because the exit liquidity question is not actually solved. So the combination is pretty crazy already. You are able to buy blue chip meme coins currently at this stage. They're quite of a lot. They will outperform their layer ones and layer ones they essentially highest performing narrative of each and every cycle. Layer 1s and meme coins, but meme coins outperform the layer 1s. We have a matter of largest blue chip meme coins on each and every chain at this stage. Which definitely makes sense because blue chip meme coins on each and every chain, they will, they will eventually outperform the main token of the chain and all the altcoins on the chain actually as well. And they also solve the issue of exit liquidity because all the retail that will come into this market that will go into loans to actually participate in this market, that will lose their money in this market, buying these meme coins. They will be buying into them, following the people they trust, the influencers that they are watching, that are telling them about the market, explaining on charts. They're just crazy. They're just crazy to me. Before we actually dive into how to find blue chip meme coins, I have an important announcement to make. Discord announcement. Something I wanted to share from my end because I'm actually changing the way how Discord VIP membership is going to work. And this is final, so it's not going to change moving forward as well. Right now we have 100 spots at this stage for people at $200 a month. 
to be members of my private VIP Discord channel. I'm not sure if you're following this channel, but I'm pretty sure you know that I'm a blue chip at this stage. I'm pretty sure that the tokens in your portfolio that are surging up are only the tokens that I was talking about. I'm pretty sure that you should know at this stage that I'm one of the reasons, if not the only reason, of why you're making any money on this market. Because the things that I'm not talking about, that I'm not catching, they don't show a lot of multipliers. They don't grow much at this stage. And I actually do think that we are in this cycle where market will not excuse you for sitting in tokens that are not pumping this time. I don't think we are seeing this cycle right now. Obviously, I missed Solana and some Solana meme coins, but no one is ideal, right? So what do we have here? This is my Patreon page. We do have previous tiers. Right now, what is happening is that only this tier will actually provide you with the access to VIP channel on Discord, to my Andy calls and other calls that I was providing that a lot of people made a bunch of money on. And not just calls, proper things with proper thesis that you would actually be able to hold with clear response to the question, who is your exit liquidity? Because I don't want my followers to be exit liquidity, right? We have 100 spots at 200 bucks a month. We only have 43 left at this stage. I advertised this first in my Discord to people who are subscribed, who are members of the VIP chat at this stage. And this is the discount that you are basically getting as the early supporter. We only have 43 spots left at this stage. The price for the VIP is $400 in general. You are getting this discount if you're actually early. The same as in crypto, right? With 400 bucks a month membership, we do only have 100 spots as well. After that, the price will increase to 600 bucks and I will continue most likely to increase it 200 bucks by 200 bucks once we would essentially be reaching 100 members for each. We will be reopening on the 6th of April. It's up to you to make a decision. It's up to you to figure out if you want to be the part of the community or not. But man, just look at your portfolio. Just look on the things that are surging up currently and figure out why you have them in your portfolio in the first place, right? So how to actually find blue chip meme coins? In general, you would just want to follow a set of criteria. How to actually find blue chip meme coins? A blue chip meme coin went through 80% deep and didn't die. That's number one. That's one of the reasons I'm not getting into bread at this stage. I'm, I'm still waiting for my 80% correction. Cult like organic community. That's very important because a lot of the memes that have been pushed by influencers, they don't have organic communities. That's very, very important thing to actually have in each and every community, in each and every meme token. If the community is organic, it's chill, it's pleasant. That's the best thing that you can only have. Upcoming catalysts, airdrop ideally, they are on chains with potential if they are on a new chain. Uh, upcoming catalysts as airdrops, they're essentially solving the issue of exit liquidity and they're also adding a bunch of liquidity into the ecosystem, which most likely will be used in your meme coin. That's the same thing that the CEO and the founder of Godbit actually mentioned in his interview that he was giving me. He said that the success of Bonk was heavily connected with the fact that Solana got two large airdrops. And Bonk was surging up during the time the market was actually going sideways or correcting, which is very, very interesting as well. Can you please tell a bit more how this happened in the first place, the whole story of Bonk and how basically the project became such a success? I think it's um, a few big on-chain airdrops in Solana ecosystem. First airdrops brought a, a lot of on-chain liquidity to Solana and it's easy to compare with uh, Biden checks to US citizens during the COVID. So when li this free liquidity comes into ecosystem, usually it stays into ecosystem and just distribute from uh, airdrop hunters to most hyped projects on chain. And Bonk, I think from August till December was the number one hype on Solana. That's why they collected a lot of liquidity from airdrops. It's quite interesting for your meme coins to be on new chains as well, on new shiny objects. People are in general more interested about new shiny objects. Although we might have the issue that they will come to the new shiny object and then they will be leaving after some time. But still you will have your initial inflow of new eyes from the market, new money from the market, which will also serve as your exit liquidity. 
That's why AROPs are actually so great. Not getting shielded by paid influencers. If influencers who are shielding coins are shady, they most likely got the bags very early or got the allocations from the team. Which means that if the token is shielded heavily by the influencer, you need to understand who's your exit liquidity. Ideally, you have to figure out who's your exit liquidity short term. Base versus blast example. If you don't understand it, you are the exit liquidity. Some interesting things on base versus blast example. There is a guy on Twitter who formed the thesis about Coinbase the first, about the base chain in the first place. He bought into Toshi, very, very low. He bought at the correction. He's also an ex Hustler University professor. Very, very great and smart guy by himself. And interesting that recently we pretty much saw the adoption of the thesis. And the main idea about the thesis is that base is this large chain. They will have, they will be onboarding a hundred million users on Ethereum layer two on base. They will have the airdrop and things like that. And when more people from the market actually understood the thesis, they wanted to participate as well. They wanted to position themselves early as well. At the same time, we basically got a bunch of shit influencers starting to go into the chain, create some crap projects, scams, pre-sales, and pretty much just try to milk people out of the money, pretty much just using this narrative, which is something that is happening on each and every chain and will continue to happen on each and every chain until eventually all these people will go to jail, especially if they're not anonymous, right? And right now, when the whole market understood the thesis already, there is no upside in the thesis anymore. At the same time, we don't know what is the date for base airdrop. Positive scenario is actually six from six to 12 months from now. We do understand that there are no retail in the market currently. This like dumb retail, right? We have some retail coming in, but these people, they are mostly not dumb. They were in crypto for some time. They keep coming in, but we don't have a large portion of dumb retail entering the market. Therefore, the thesis right now is very, very weak for base short term. It does not have strong catalyst for the thesis. This is something I was sharing three, four weeks ago because at the time it was already clear to me that the thesis for base is weak and that most people will eventually understand that airdrop is not coming anytime soon. Retail is not here as well. They will eventually leave the chain. They will come back to Solana or maybe to Blast, some new shiny object, right? With actually short-term thesis and short-term narrative as well, right? And a lot of the meme coins on base will be correcting. This is something I'm actually waiting for. As you see, I formed the thesis. I formed a strategy based on this thesis. And I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting comfortably for my 80% correction. Because all these shit influencers that got the bags early into bread for free or they bought from the market. They will be taking profits. They are not rich. They are nobodies. Most of them, they are nobodies before crypto. They would want to take their money. They would be so scared to see their funds going on to large correction. It will be happening because this is almost played out already. Once the dumbest person on the market would understand that the airdrop is not coming, they would eventually take profits. And they will essentially cause a cascade of people taking profits as well. And the other example is Blast. Because we have defined airdrop for Blast in May. It's pretty much just two months from now. In upcoming two months. Airdrop should be 100 million plus. Because airdrop on Blur was 100 million dollars, right? This is the catalyst. And this is how you actually make money in the market. You should have a short-term catalyst connected to your meme coins. If you're actually buying into them, or if you don't have a short-term catalyst and you're buying into a meme coin, you need to understand who's your exit liquidity. What is the long-term thesis for a token? How much you actually want to wait? Because if you're getting into base meme coins and you want to sell them to someone in a week from now who, who will actually buy higher from you, why is this going to happen? Everyone understand the thesis already. Why this is actually going to happen? Tell me. You might be getting into base currently because you understand that in a year from now we will still have this airdrop and these prices they still most likely are cheap and things like that. It's fine if you're getting with this type of mindset, but I think that's less than 3% of people who are getting into base meme coins with this type of mindset. Most people are just gambling. Most people are just hurt that they're being led to a slaughterhouse by 
people they trust by influencers. Ideally largest memes on the chains. It's very, very important that blue chip meme coins should be ideally largest memes on the chains. Man, I still have something to share on bread. I will be sharing the bread situation closer to the end of the video as well. But focus on the liquidity. Focus on the amount of funds that actually are locked in the token at this stage, not the market cap, right? And usually largest meme tokens on each and every chain, it will be doing quite well. Ideally following strong narrative. I would say the dog meta and cat meta, they're weaker ones just because of the fact that they're not that strong. They're kind of old. At the same time, they are, I would say they're the most appealing to normies. This is something that we cannot neglect as well. They are the most appealing to normies. Pepper meta, we have a bunch of tokens around Pepper and bunch of people who are claiming themselves as experts, essentially telling the market about these tokens. And if the time for this video will allow, I will go through all the 4chan memes. I will go through the boys club as well. I will explain everything because I was sitting in these things from the time they actually appeared on the marketplace. I was here when Boba initially launched. I know so much insights. I know so much stuff that you cannot actually fathom from your end about the memes on these chains. So crazy. Politify meta, but they are shorter term. And I think that's why not a lot of liquidity actually coming into them because you cannot hold Politify meme coin through the next cycle. And you might say like, Stan, you're adjusting, you're advising us to hold meme coins in the next cycle. Like, are you crazy? Yes, I am. I do think that blue chip meme coins can easily be hold into the next cycle. Obviously, on the blue chip chains that are not going to die out moving forward. Probably, most likely, think like Ethereum, right? Maybe Stacks. Maybe Stacks also might be a nice candidate for that. So, let's move on. Easiest play of blue chip meme coins virtual banking is exploiting right now. Solving exit liquidity problem. Toshi example, Daniel, who called Toshi and Dream Crypto part as well. Easiest thing that virtual banking is doing currently, he is pretty much buying largest meme coins on the chains that are going to receive airdrops. And it's the best thing that you can only be doing currently. Main reason for that is because airdrops are coming for each and every chain. Ethereum layer 2 is mostly at this stage because Ethereum layer 2 is there just giant pump and dumps by VCs, right? Tons of new liquidity. They would be spending money on marketing. They will be giving free money away as well. Free house money. People do not appreciate free house money. Most of them, they're just playing with them. They're putting the money into meme coins. Some people, they feel like they have too much money. So psychology actually screws up with them and they're looking to throw them into a meme coin because you just made 20k on an airdrop and you pretty much done nothing right what if you just put it into this meme coin and 4x this money 5x this money it's very very lucrative offer right people like to stick to their chain and marry with their chain as well we will have different airdrops on different chains we will definitely have certain people that will stay on these chains after the airdrops as well. Virtual Bacon is solving his exit liquidity issue because meme coins are something that retail will be buying into and something that guys with the airdrops will be buying into as well. Therefore, it's very, very easy and very, very, very straightforward. Top memes of each chain that will be receiving airdrop is the most alpha play you can only make. Now, several months ago, Daniel McAvoy, who is the ex-professor in the Hustler University of Andrew Tate, he came up to the market with the thesis that Coinbase will be doing airdrop. Coinbase will be onboarding 100 million plus users into the market. Therefore, largest meme on the chain will be doing very, very well. He saw Toshi at the time. It was quite large already. So he waited once it corrected 80% to 2 million market cap, and then he bought in. And he pretty much introduced this thesis into the marketplace. And recent pump that we had with base, with base meme coins and things like that, this pump is generally just based on this base thesis. The fact that it's the chain that is going to be more than 100 million users because they are the largest centralized exchange in the US and the fact that they will have the airdrop. The guy pretty much just introduced this thesis into the market several months ago and he capitalized heavily on his thesis. Something I wanted to share from him as well. If you're positioned in coins that make you feel like the bull isn't here yet, you're in the wrong coins. 
Things are different now. This is a meme coin super cycle. Investor nihilism is the meta and people don't care about VC inside the coins anymore. It's very, very interesting. I would say it's one of the main theses. It's one of the main reasons of why this video exists in the first place. You need to understand this. You need to follow this and you need to apply this in your investing as well. The fact that people, current market participants, they're pretty much not caring a lot about VC tokens, about these VCs essentially dumping them on them because in the last cycle, a bunch of them, they dump on them in the bear heavily and everyone saw that and everyone understood it. And that's why people are focusing on meme coins currently because there is no one to dump on you in the meme coins, obviously, except your shit or shilling it, right? We do definitely see this change of matter at this stage. And it's very, very interesting what's going to happen moving forward. I would urge you to take additional look on the tokens that you have that are not moving yet and really think on repositioning some of them, right? Moving forward, we have examples from Virtual Bacon. He is pushing Foxy on Linear and he's also pushing Panda on Scroll. Very nice tactic, very smart tactic. He started to do this after my video on Andy. Maybe it's a correlation, just something random as well. Very, very interesting because you definitely need to make sure that the meme coin that you're pushing will actually be the largest meme coin on the chain because the largest meme coin on the chain will be also acquiring all of the liquidity. I think that something very, very interesting actually happened with Base and Toshi because I think that there were some whales that understood the thesis on Toshi, but they were not able to get into Toshi early or maybe they missed the thesis at that time. Then they understood it and they decided to push Brett. And I will, I will share some things about Brett as well. Very, very interesting what is happening on the marketplace currently. Last but not least, we have Andy Drama. So if you're following the market, I was talking about Andy on Blast for quite some time. And recently we, we had Max, uh, the guy who was shilling a lot of Brad tokens and 4chan meme tokens, Bobo and others. And he pretty much came up with a thesis that right Andy is Andy on Ethereum uh, because the contract starts from uh, 0x68. I will actually show you why Max is saying that Andy on Ethereum is actually the right one. And I will provide you with an overview from my end. I will be explaining my thesis here and I will just share my actions. It's up to you. You have all the information. It's up to you to make your own decisions as well. Several things I wanted to share is that I don't have anything against Max. We pretty much talked a bit on Twitter. I explained to him uh, why he might be wrong and why he might be using his followers as exit liquidity. He just stopped responding. I want this message to be the last one on the topic of different endies. Although probably, I do understand it's probably not going to be the last one just because of the fact we have Andy on Solana at play currently. Very, very interesting. And you have to understand why this is happening. You have to understand that people are fighting for the long-term potential of this meme because they understand that we are in the meme coin super cycle. And I will tell you what my bet on right now because maybe I already sold all of my Andy on Blast and maybe I had repositioned to Andy on Ethereum already. All should be clear after that. If not clear, unsubscribe and serve as exit liquidity. I can, I can say that I maybe was a bit emotional when I was writing this initially, but it's essentially up to you. I'm just explaining a thesis and telling you the things as they are. This is what I'm doing on this channel. What is the difference between buying a dead coin and pumping it using your audience and explaining a thesis, proposing exit liquidity for the followers, not using them as exit liquidity? With more power comes more responsibility. That's one of the things that I wanted to share in between the behavior that Max pretty much did himself and that I have done myself on this channel. Because the current situation I see that is that I bought Andy and at the same time I explained the thesis. I, I explained who's going to be your exit liquidity and I explained the thesis behind airdrop. I explained the thesis behind Ponzinomics of the chain, longevity of the whole thing and the reason why I think Blast is going to do well. Max's explanation and Max's thesis at this stage is 0x68 and the fact that Andy that he pumped with his community is trending very very nice against Pepe and he is, he is creating charts on the shitcoin with 1 million market cap which is very very interesting after he pretty much just pumped it himself, right? And in order to prove something right or something wrong, we would also be using on-chain because beauty with on-chain is the fact that we can see everything. We can see everything that 
is happening on chain. We have this post on the guy essentially accusing Max on dumping on his followers and the fact that he bought ND on ETH very, very low and then he pushed it. And it's this classic type of example where influencers, they decide to buy a dead token, they decide to shill, to pump it, and then they decide to sell. But I want to make it specifically clear. I'm not accusing anyone of anything in this video. I'm just sharing information. I'm just sharing information, letting you to decide by yourself, because this is not what I'm doing in this space. I'm not pushing anything, anyone to anywhere, right? And the guy is stating that this is the wallet of Max, with the evidence, with the fact that he was buying the tokens before, right? So I put his wallet into the Zerium, right? We see it's this wallet, it has $1.4 million at this stage, and it has around $1 million in ND on Ethereum. It also has Base, it also has Dodo, Bobo, Snibu, Mumu, Birdog, and Ethereum Base. So definitely a high chance that this is actually the wallet of Max. I tend to think that this is the wallet of Max, who is pushing ND on Ethereum right now. What's interesting for us is actually to get into his ND transactions and see what was happening. We see that Max was buying ND. He pretty much bought ND in eight chunks on the 1st of April. He was buying 800 bucks, 900 bucks worth of it. So the overall investment should be around 6.5, 6.6K. So he put $6,500 into ND on Ethereum. That might just tell us something about the conviction of Max on this project in the first place. Right now he has around $1 million in ND on Ethereum. And if we would check the chart and if we would check the chain of the events, right, we would see that he published his video on the 1st of April. He pretty much bought into the token and the same day he's publishing a video telling about the token to his audience and stating that this ND is actually the right one. And the whole thesis behind that is the fact that the contract starts with 0x68 and Pepper contract starts with 0x69. And that's why this ND is actually a real ND, right? And I explained the whole thesis to the guy in DMs. I even sent him my video where I am explaining the whole thesis. He just did not respond. I understand. I was a bit aggressive in my tweet, so I definitely understand this. This is my explanation to you. This is why Max is saying that this ND is actually the real one. This is why he's pushing this ND currently. The main reason for that is because he bought at the bottom. He put 6K in and right now he has $1 million. That's 180 access pretty much same day because he bought 1st of April. Right now he already has 1 million bucks in the whole thing. But I will also provide you with unbiased overview of what I would be doing currently at this stage if I maybe would want to get into certain ND at this stage, right? And a very, very interesting thing I wanted to share on ND on Ethereum is that liquidity, current liquidity is 1.3 million. The market cap is 55 million at this stage. We can check out the holders. We can see that a lot of the holders, they essentially have bags equal to the total liquidity of the token, right? We can find Max Wallet here as well. 5C1, these are the letters that Max Wallet is ending up with. He has $965,000 in ND on Ethereum. He pretty much has close to all of the liquidity on the token. So if he decides to take profit, or if any of these guys would decide to take profits, the whole thing would just go straight to zero. It's very, very weak. And the main reason why it's weak is because we can see that the total value is 44.5 million plus all of these 10 holders, maybe should be around 55 million, right? So we see that the fully diluted market cap is 54 million. Liquidity is 1.3 and total value of the tokens is 55 million as well, which means that there are a bunch of guys making a bunch of access multipliers on paper. And a bunch of guys, they will be taking profits from this thing. And just several people taking 10, 15, 20k profits, it would just dump the chart heavily. Just because of the fact the correlation between liquidity and the market cap is a bit shady. It's a bit scummy. It's like these meme coins on Solana where influencers, they just buy into dead tokens. They just pump it up. They're using the marketing like, oh, 
50 million market cap, 100 million market cap, 150 million market cap. The correlation is very, very bad, which leads to the fact that eventually someone is taking profits and the charges dumps heavily and it causes a cascade of people taking profits on this thing. And the whole thing just dumps heavily because of the fact that correlation between the market cap and liquidity is just not there. It's quite bad. I also urge you to focus on the liquidity. We can see that ND on ETH liquidity right now is 1.3 million, ND on Blast is 1 million, and ND on Sol is 475k, which is being pushed by Mario Nafal at this stage. Very, very interesting what's actually going to happen with ND on Sol, but I believe that two main competitors might be ND on Ethereum right now and ND on Blast. What's quite interesting as well is that there are a bunch of people who are buying into this token way, way early. And they are not the followers of Max. They were basically just buying early into this thing. And right now, they're dumping heavily. They're dumping hard on Max audience. And the guy just dumped 70k, right? You might ask like, oh, he probably does not have any more tokens no, he has $630,000 more worth of tokens that he can dump at each and every moment. Just because of the fact that the correlation between the liquidity and the market cap is so bad. You need to understand that the structure of this thing is quite low. That's the reason why it was able to reach these high market caps in the first place. But that's also the reason why people would be taking profits. They will be dumping the chart heavily. Let's circle back and finalize the whole situation at this stage. Max bought this token at the bottom. Then he shielded in his video and in his community as well. He started to heavily shield this token. Right now he has 1 million that he cannot take as profits at this stage. At the same time, there are a bunch of people that have a bunch of money in this token. They might be taking profits easily. The structure of liquidity in correlation to market cap is quite low. Several people taking profits on this thing would probably just dump it to zero, right? I see three options for Max at this stage because I don't think that the thesis is there. We are not receiving a 100 million airdrop on Ethereum. We don't have focus on Ethereum for this meme coin. They created 25 million daily volumes, but it's fake in the first place. And they probably spent quite a lot of time and they probably spend quite a lot of money on essentially creating it because when the token is surging with this amount of liquidity, it does not create $25 million of volume. I see three options. The first one is just take profits on 1 million and leave. This way, Max will probably be losing all of his credibility, at least what's left from it, right? And the reason he might be doing that is, is because obviously it's a lot of money and he still has an option to actually do that. He can take $1 million worth of profit from 6K that he invested initially. That's 180 access. At the same time, he might be doing that because he might understand that the narrative is that as well. He might understand that the whole narrative of 0x68 is very, very weak. And the main thing he's pushing this thing is because he bought early and because he made a bunch of access at this stage. The second option that I see is continue pushing the project, which probably would be the best option for Max if he would be able to do that. At the same time, he would probably need to send some of his allocation to influencers, to friends that he knows, and all of them, they will start to push this price of the token up. Eventually, one of the early holders, he can just take some profits on the whole thing and it, it will be dumping heavily and they will not be buying back. It's also quite hard in the first place because I would say that the narrative is quite weak. Only 0x68. The current ND on Ethereum is posting meme coins. The current ND on Ethereum is posting memes on the Twitter page from ND on base. And the project was that the community is artificial. Nothing is created organically here. Just an influencer feeling more power, buying in the bottoms and telling, trying to persuade the market that this is the right one. Trying to persuade the market that this is the right one and pushing this token up. There is no $100 million airdrop coming on Ethereum that will specifically be focused on Andy on Ethereum. But there is one that would be coming for Andy on Blast, right? I would be very excited and very interested to actually see 
if Max would be able to succeed with him pushing this token up. At this stage, I don't think he would be able to do that. Even if he would be sending parts of his allocations to his friends and they will be pushing the whole thing going up and things like that. His allocation is not the largest one because it still does not solve the question of exit liquidity. If he would be doing that, his followers and the followers of other influencers would still be exit liquidity. You are not answering the question of exit liquidity this way. And I think question of exit liquidity, at least short term, is definitely solved for Andy on Blast. The third option is just to recognize that this is something that he pumped, that he didn't think it will go that high. That just to say that, guys, I would be taking 10, 20 X multipliers profit from my 6K. So I would just take 60, 120 K and just leave the whole project to die out. So everyone can actually take profits from it. But there would still be people that won't actually be satisfied. There would still be people that got dumped on. And I would say slow bleed is the safest option, sure. Because if it's going to be a slow bleed, people will have some hope. They will start to forget on the project over some time. But let's actually see what will be happening. I, I would say it's a very, very interesting situation currently. Some things on Max and Brett that I wanted to share as well, because blockchain is an open ledger and we can see everything that's happening. I think uh, Brett might have been an insider job by Wales just because they understood that base chain is something that will be getting a lot of liquidity. And if you will actually be owning a meme coin that will be top, that will be the largest one on the base chain, that will be a very, very lucrative opportunity for you. That's why they essentially created the token in the first place. And that's why they wanted to pump it. I don't think that Crash has any connection with initial cable. I do respect Crash a lot. I think he just spotted this meme in the first place. He understood what was happening. He got in, he created a video and the video essentially pumped the whole thing. And maybe, and maybe it's actually happened sooner before the founding team actually wanted to start the marketing of the whole thing. It's interesting that they had very quick uh, listings on exchanges, which means that they definitely had connections in the first place. And at the same time, a lot of influencers, they bought into this thing, or maybe they were sent the tokens as well to pretty much scream about this token on Twitter and things like that. There is also an interesting correlation in terms of the liquidity and market cap on Brett as well, because what's funny is that between all of the Andy meme tokens, I think overall liquidity of Andy meme tokens right now is $3 million. And Brett liquidity before $3 million were added artificially recently, it was only $4 million. And the market cap was like already at 600 million, 700 million, which is very, very interesting by itself. Just an ultra mind. I think what happened was is that when founding team and Wales saw that people are not buying higher than at 400 million market cap, 500 million market cap, they actually had done something smart because they used all of the tools that they had already. They used influencers, they used listings on exchanges and maybe Max created first chart of Brett himself and Wales just saw and founding team just saw that it has a very, very, very nice type of effect on the market as well. Maybe they reached out to him first and asked him to create charts in the first place. Nevertheless, it resulted in Max essentially creating charts on Brett and showing everyone that Brett is outperforming Pepe, things like that. So the thing that he has done with this chart is that he added additional pillar of stability into meme coin. He pretty much explained and added a bit of conviction for people to get into the whole thing, which is very, very smart by founding team in the first place, because it almost was introduced just recently into the market, charting meme coins and comparing them with larger meme coins and things like that. It's smart in the first place. And the main question you might have, but Max was saying that he's buying all of his tokens from the market, right? We can actually check out something very, very interesting on his wallet in connection to Brett itself. We're just scrolling down, we're clicking on Brett. Uh, right now he has $160,000 worth of Brett on his wallet. These are all the transactions, right? And we click view more transactions. We scroll down and we can see that he received 2.8 million 
words of bread. Round, beautiful number, right? And it's very, very interesting for us where he received these funds from. So we actually go and check out this wallet. It's so this one, $20,000 at this stage, right? Let's actually find the transaction where they were sending $100,000 worth of bread to Max, right? Here, this one, 2.8 million on bread. It was sent on March 26. Previously, they sent $3.8 million worth of bread somewhere. Let's actually check out this wallet as well. We are opening up this wallet and we see that this wallet has certain million dollars at this stage. And they essentially have certain million dollars in bread. Therefore, I assume that this is the wallet of bread team. So Max was not buying bread from the market. Max received bread from the funding team of bread to pretty much create shill posts and create all of this charting on Twitter to persuade more people to buy into bread in the first place. Very, very interesting. And kind of feel bad as well because of this. What was happening while he was shilling bread because they bought him, because they wanted him to create these charts and post these charts on Twitter, he was pretty much selling his bread. 3K chunks, 3K chunks, 4K chunks, 6K chunks. And this only the history on one of the pages. Because we can actually see full second page as well. Full of sales. 3K, 3K, 6K. He, he pretty much was selling bread yesterday as well. And we have the second full page of transactions. So he got paid by bread team to shill and chart bread on Twitter. At the same time, he was selling all the time through, screaming and saying how bullish he actually is on bread and how bullish these charts actually look. Selling on his followers, on people who trust him, who are getting into bread the same way they're getting into Andy on Ethereum at this stage. And you might say, Stan, but didn't you know this? All of the influencers, they're doing this. Like, what's, what's wrong about this part? We have never... And we will never accept any sort of, you know, pre-sale allocation type of deals. Okay. Everything that we talk about here on this channel and also on X, these are projects that we have real money in, our own money in. I get offered every single day 1% of the supply of some, you know, brand new crappy ticker, right? I don't respond to any of them. You know, we started this business, you know, a couple years ago with sort of the underpinning of it all to do things differently and to not fall into those same uh, those same traps and you know bs that a lot of other you know crypto marketers do because we're not crypto marketers we're me and my entire team we're all traders and investors ourselves and we're really just documenting what we're doing in these markets but i recognize that as we grow you know things do they do change a little bit, some for the better, some for the worse. So, you know, the, the only leg up that I have on and some for the better, some for the worse. So, you know, the, the only leg up that I have on any of you potentially watching and not even all of you, some of you got into the stuff before me is that I'm talking about my plays publicly. I got in cheaper than you, most likely, you know, but I'm not selling anytime soon. Um, I'm holding. So you don't have to worry about that. But anyways, I just wanted to talk through this because I understand, you know, we're talking about really risky stuff here.